Welcome in Washington DC for a new edition of the Association of the United States Army on UO meeting and exposition. As always, besides briefings and official speech, there's a huge exhibition, all featuring about 700 exhibitors from more than 100 countries. Scott DeBold, I'm the president of CMI Defense America, Inc. And uh, we are a subsidiary of CMI Defense Belgium. Uh, we're their U.S. arm here for the U.S. Uh, the U.S. market and U.S. foreign military sales. We were down selected by Ardec in 2016 uh, from five competitors uh, to participate in the creative for the development of the future medium caliber armament system for the United States Army. Uh, we delivered this turret off of our modular concept, the 3000 series, in nine months from uh, start of work to delivery to the U.S. government. The modular concept that we have is, a, is basically a copyrighted product that we have associated with modular, the modularity of our turret that allows us to be able to change from medium to large caliber turrets. Uh, so, so this turret was designed by CMI Defense in Belgium uh, with Ardec to meet specific U.S. requirements. Uh, it mounts the XM813 with the linkless ammunition system, 30 millimeter, that is the U.S. government's solution for 30 millimeter at this point for land vehicles. It mounts second gen FLIR, uh, which is the U.S. government's standard FLIR that they use, which is upgradable to third gen. Uh, it mounts the Saab Avatronics uh, laser warning system that was requested by the U.S. government, as you can see on the top of it. Uh, and then the Ardec situational base fire control system is integrated in this turret and we're the first people that have integrated that in a turret system to be able to integrate uh, to, for the soldiers to have an intuitive method of uh, engaging with airburst ammunition. Uh, it's pretty exclusive to the United States government and pretty exclusive to the requirements here. Initially it was designed, it was envisioned that it would be part of the striker lethality upgrade program but currently we're having a lot of interest associated with this turret for the optionally manned fighting vehicle program as well, uh, based upon the fact that it provides an optionally manned turret with graceful degradation of the fire control system. It can be manned and manually fired from inside the turret, plus it provides hatches on top as you can see so that the, the crew can be at name tag defilade and assist the driver in operation of the vehicle in tight, close terrain and for administrative uh, moves that are associated with the vehicle in a motor pool or whatever else. Uh, but in complex terrain, it's very difficult to provide 360 degree SA that gives the same definition as the Mark I eyeball. So we are again uh, partnered with SAIC and ST Kinetics and we have presented our bid sample uh, to the US government that has been extensively tested and we are currently waiting for the decision by the U.S. government on the down select in November, by the end of November of this year. My name is Mike Akabuchi. I'm a Director of Business Development for General Dynamics, Ordnance and Tactical Systems, um, mainly focused on vehicles. Uh, General Dynamics Ordnance Tactical Systems is a part of General Dynamics Combat Systems. Flyer 72 is uh, one of a, a variant of vehicles that we've produced. Um, we're currently on contract with US SOCOM on what we refer to as Ground Mobility Vehicle 1.1. Uh, we also have provided vehicles to the US Army under a uh, directed requirement called uh, Army Ground Mobility Vehicle, which is the vehicle that uh, provides occupant, uh, nine occupants to, uh, to move on a the battlefield tactically. Our vehicles are different in that they provide a, a enhanced level of mobility, um, tactical mobility, but at the same time because of their dimensions and their weight allow them to be internally transported on a CH-47. Well in addition to the internal transportability, uh, the vehicles were built around a set of requirements that required it to, um, to be e mission tailorable. So through, through a set of kits what we can do is reconfigure the vehicle to allow it to, to meet several different mission profiles. And so what you see here today is one example of those mission profiles. It's the general purpose configuration. 
Um, the same vehicle could accommodate seven people and, and be used tailored to an airfield seizure mission or it could be um, reduced in terms of vehicle occupants to three so there's more room for, um, for storage of supplies to, to conduct a longer range reconnaissance of say seven to ten days. Likewise for the vehicle that seats nine that's meant to move an infantry squad from um, point A to point B on the battlefield. Same levels of mobility for all those mission profiles it's just rapidly configurable um, through some kits. Of course, uh, my name is Kyle Fagan. I'm with uh, Profence out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, yes, our PF556 is one of our newest weapon systems. It's a derivative of the M134 weapon system that we're known for. It carries along some of the same unique features as our legacy M134, such as the aero clamp, our improved feed system, and our completely digital GCU. Its rate of fire is between 4,000 and 6,000 rounds a minute, and it's a nice little package. 5.56 is unique because this is in direct response to customer requests who have asked for a smaller minigun style weapon to fit in more compact enclosures for uh, close protection, VIP, convoy escort type situations. So answering those, answering the mailbox, so to speak, this is what we came up with to help them solve their problems. <music>